I'm the, I'm the tech idiot. Um, oh, but he knows how to use HBO Max. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you got kids. So your kids, do your kids have to go to college? And I ask this because I had to go to college. Like that was a mandate or mandate being a, a significant wish of my parents. And I'm sure, and, and many an Indian parent out there, and by many, I mean almost all that I'm aware of, that I know anyway. What are your thoughts on college slash the, the college, the student loan situation, your kids, and well, that stuff? My son has two life goals. You know, the first is to play in the NBA. Second is to be a rapper. And really, ideally, an NBA rapper. <laughs> no, no, he's really got one, ideally, but he'll take that. So, if so I school is not part of the situation. <laughs> <laughs> Your son is not about that. You know what? I'm gonna be, he wants to be an accountant, you know, I don't want to do that. No, so, but obviously, you know, I'm like, oh, you kind of need a plan C. He doesn't want to um, follow dad's footsteps. <laughs> what you say, Dan or dad? Dad's, Dan's. Uh, um, so, no, Dan's college, actually an athlete, I can understand that. College. Yeah, the, the college thing is, is interesting. Um, I, I I will kind of cross that bridge again. I envision them going to college. But I mean, and again, obviously this is significantly premature as you have many, many years prior to this decision being made by your family. But as, as of now, like, do you care if they go to college? Like, does it, like, would it matter if they go, yo, dad, I'm going to go to blah, blah, blah. I'm going to go intern at whatever, or I'm going to... I don't know. Like, do you something. Intern where after high school? I don't know. I want to take a job at like record company X and take a job with with uh, NBA team Y. Take a job with whomever. Doing in essence, doing whatever they really want. I'm gonna go and and start working on my on, on, on my hip hop career. No, uh, you know, unfortunately, with the way society is, and now, so college education doesn't even really mean much. It's more than masters. On. Why is that? Why is that unfortunately? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. You're saying the masters means the masters is the college degree? Yeah, masters yeah. in essence. The bachelor's. The, the bachelor's, the bachelor's right? Mm -hmm. um, do you use your college degree? No, I mean, I you use, use your it, master's? No. I mean, I use it to get my job. Okay, right. But, it, but do I use it in my job yeah. function? Zero. Could you have had a different degree to get your job now? No. Yes. Oh, you could have? Yes. All right, so your degree, having a degree has helped, but the specific degree Correct. doesn't help you now. Correct. Right. Now, I, and again, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, I feel like at this point, based on what I've seen, I work in, I'm in the entertainment space, and there are a, a plethora of individuals who have anything from like a poli sci degree to an English degree to a math degree, etc., and all doing whatever the F they want right now, but they, unfor unfortunately, it's a strong word, but they needed a degree to get to a stage where they don't need the degree, if that makes any sense, you know what I'm saying? Like, they needed to pay a good amount of money to then show that they have the aptitude to learn, to then do something that literally if I'd spent four more years doing exactly what I wanted to do, I'd be way ahead of the game. Yeah. And without debt. Yeah. You know what but, I'm saying? But, here's the Speaking of which, Biden, get rid of the damn debt or anything that I want to, right? <laughs> Sorry. You know, there's the talk about, you know, if you decided to graduate and go and say, let's say, be a FedEx driver, or mm -hmm. UPS driver, or some other kind of job, and coming out making mid five figures, mm -hmm. um, you know, over time building it up that you could retire in a better off situation than many people do coming out with that getting, say, a $27,000 no, job, $32,000 sure. job, and then slowly getting higher and higher, but with that debt and burden mm -hmm. in the long run for many people, plus, oh, plus you have a four year head start. That's what I'm saying, that yeah. time is significant. Time, yes. But now don't get me wrong, as I'm saying all this too, I know full well that there is a societal, uh, I mean, the, the judgment, there is judgment on certain occupations and blah, blah, blah. And you judge people immediately by being, and I'm saying you, I'm including myself, by the way, uh, there's, there's always this, there's this, always strong, but there's this first judgment of people being, uh, well, lacking who people lacking accomplishment. Yeah. Well, when, they, when, they this, when, you, when, when people meet someone, one of the first questions they ask is, "What do you do?" Okay, that's a very hard. I've been trying to stop doing that, and I did. I haven't no, done I, it in a long I, time. I, I intentionally stopped. It's, it's really actually, difficult to not do. By the way, it's actually our boy Lionel who schooled me to it years ago. He told me he thought it was like just ridiculous and, and insignificant. But okay, hold up. Unless you're doing it for networking purposes, yes, right? To so say you're in a network, or you just try, or you're trying to push. 
your agenda thing, mm-hmm. I can kind of get it. But just casually kind of thing, always curious to know what someone does. It's But I think, okay, so I think Lionel comes from a different perspective too. And what I mean by that is Lionel's never worked for the man. Lionel's uh, never had a nine to five job that I'm aware of. Take that back. I don't know him to ever have had not a nine to five, but he did, he did work for a big real estate, strictly commission, like I did. Okay. So he did that kind of job. Okay, and the but reason, never, yeah. No, no, but the reason I'm saying that is like, so if you ask Lionel what he does right now, in Aruba, like he he owns he does his own thing, and I think for him being who he is, is again my interpretation of his view is you can be like yeah I may come off a little pompous if I say I do X Y and Z, so I don't want to get into what I do. No, it's really he, no, no, he is that not for him? No, for his wife Vanessa comes off pompous. Like they'll be at the doctor like at say noon, mm-hmm. and she like. Telling you you're like in a lunch break for your meeting. Or <laughs> oh, so she, <laughs> she, so she, she feels you be judged. She yes, that like he's he's not in his work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is true, by the way. Yeah. When I went to Aruba, like this yeah. was a couple of years ago. I go down and I was like, I'll pick you up from the airport. Dude. Yeah. I'm like, don't you have a job? Yeah. Like, it, it, be? it was like one o'clock. <laughs> I said to him, okay, all right, we're gonna go back. So we'll link you later. He's like, I got nothing to do. <laughs> but the irony is now yeah. he doesn't he doesn't even have time. He's working like physically working, yeah. like. like Manual labor on his uh, buildings, mm-hmm. his place, and also um, his other stuff. Yeah. Doesn't work out as much. He's got, he's falling into that uh, Dominic Delgado <laughs> workout routine. By the way, day three, working out, it's been five or six weeks. I have not exercised or even stretched. And stretching was my thing. I could stretch with the best of them. <laughs> Bedroom body alert. Yeah, Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> and he's wearing a. <laughs> He's even wearing a black t-shirt now. He's an extra spelt. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> Three days ain't that. <laughs> Three days is far from that. Three days is a very premature entry at that point. Um, but yeah. So, no, okay. So ahead. if 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 your kids were to say that, what would you think? Or you think you don't know? No, I don't. And that's the thing. Like I want, like right now, I think that I wasted a significant number of years and money, right? And money that I borrowed. So money could have added. What about if you had gone to different colleges and got the same? It would have been a waste. But a lot cheaper. Yeah, but I still would have spent money on something I didn't really want to do. Yeah. Is my point. Like, I think a lot of us going to college because we know that we quote unquote have to go to college because our parents or whatever. And then we pick a degree, not based on what we want to do, but based on a variety of things. Anything from, yo, that girl's doing this and we're following her hair, or um, this seems a little easier, or my friends are doing next month. There's a myriad of decisions that are made not based on where you want to be. There are a handful of people, by the way, who know the other one. Yeah. I was gonna say, the problem you. is a lot of us at that age don't have zero. You're food. ignorant. So, that, that is hopefully a way of exposing you to certain things. Yeah, the idea is you're supposed to be able to see so many things so you can make better decisions for yourself going forward. Yeah. Right? The reality is, if that in fact is true, if that is the case, then putting you in a particular school, i.e. putting you in the business school or the arts and sciences school or in a certain, you have to declare a major. Yeah. So how does that work then? Because then you end up spending money and going, crap, is that what I want to do? Then by the, by the way, the school's got your money now, now you gotta spend more money to do something else to get your to get your things. Paco, you gotta come on here and tell me about how you spent 12 years in school and now we're a teacher. Is uh, 12 or 20? How, how many years did you spend in school? He, he spent eight. <laughs> right? Go, go actually mentioned it, yes. <laughs> 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 I mean, Park, literally eight year undergrad. This guy, this guy had more credits than they knew what to do with. They did yeah. not. I mean, this yeah. guy. More, yeah. I, I've never seen anybody with this many credits, right? And now he's teaching our youth. Yes, actually, he's a athletic uh, or activities director. For the but he was teaching our youth. Yes, yes. And I was teaching in activities. Yes. I'm sure he was a wonderful teacher too. Uh, why would you? Uh, I mean, he he's Mr. Paco, which I think is just hilarious. <laughs> no, okay. Mr. Fern. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Mr. Fern? Yeah, hey, Mr. Fern. Are you serious? <laughs> yes. In Miami? Yes. Wow, I did not know that. Yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll get Mr. Fern on to talk about himself. But yeah, so I just didn't know how people feel about that because I, I like everybody, a bunch of my friends have kids now. I, what, what I like the college aspect for is, and I did not do this well, so I will teach my, I tell my kids this now when they're in elementary school. And I'll teach, push it in high school especially, is the networking aspect. Period. That's what I is. failed at that. Yeah, you and, were pretty bad. I mean, you, you weren't exactly... You, I'm sorry, who moved on a mic to... I'm sorry. You, I had somebody kind of fall out of there. I'm just saying. I was here for how many years? Did you just have a stroke? No, no I said a bunch of years. Years. <laughs> I'm just saying. I was in school for two years. Right? You were in school for four. 
Yes. Just say that accomplish a fair amount more in the social networking game than you did in your four that I did too. Uh, fake news. Again, nah. you keep you keep mixing me up with like uh, somebody I'm not gonna mention because you keep <laughs> insulting him. And oh, guy, this is good. oh, you did. You uh, rather, yeah, poor guy. Really? Know? Yes. Okay. With his uh. All right. Move on. Yes. Don't say with oh. whatever. Okay. I agree with this. Right. My so, point is yes. So, so the networking aspect is something I would, I, but I would espouse that in any walk of life. True. It's something it's just even in school. Just smile and be nice to people, not just for network, but just to make people's days just a better society. Just walk around. I'm in an elevator and say, have a nice day. Smile. Yeah, yeah you definitely weren't that person. You I was were, not. I was, was very introverted. And, intro, intro, intro who? Introverted. That's not what you said. That that was 100% you said introverted, introverted or something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> Here's said. how introverted I was. If you're watching on the YouTubes, I'm wearing a shirt of a company we started and failed at it. <laughs> <laughs> T-shirt company uh, back in like oh three oh four. Yeah, I graduated. But the, the real purpose, really, when you break it down, was to meet girls and throw a party. We were so excited about this. We, party. All, we almost got the party. Oh my right? god! Yeah. yeah. So we didn't have any money, but we, we didn't had really party. put much effort into this. And I was so introverted that on my business card, I <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I did not even want a business card. So Puff made me. I made me get a business card. It was three of us. It was our, our friend Lotion. I put a mixed phone number because I didn't want to talk to people. I wasn't about selling. I wasn't about marketing. I wasn't about promoting. He didn't even want his own card. He wanted to use my card. Yes. And I, there was I, no logic I, here. I said I wanted to just walk around with his card and give it to people if I met somebody. So I made, I, by default, we printed on my business card a mixed yeah, phone number. Yeah, my phone number. So yes, I was not particularly extroverted. Yeah. No, I mean, I, 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 like, I think that's the value play of college, but I just... I think there's got to be a better way, man. For those costs, like the the the, the benefit, like I almost say the European method of taking a year off to go, you know, travel the world or do whatever, and then go to school. Like taking a year off between high school and college makes significant worth because that year, to your point, networking wise, uh, finding who you are, what you want to do, etc. I feel is way more valuable yeah. than rushing to the college fair. Well, I'd love to learn about you know because we're coming from a different. Um, aspect coming from the circles we're in, their families are in the college is expected, right? Mm -hmm. But for you know minorities um, and even white, poor rural white people, right? Mm -hmm. Who who the aspect of college is yeah, so it's far, country, yeah. it's so foreign to them. I I, I want to learn more about the just kind of what they envision. You know, they, is it foreign to them by choice? Uh, Clearly, a lot of by necessity they can't afford it. Mm -hmm. um, if you're poor, regardless of color, you can't even contemplate even scholarship. But just the education in their communities themselves, they're not being pushed towards going to college. They're not given the, the, just the opportunities to even prepare for college and even even want to go. Yeah. Now, I mean, again, we can argue if going is good or bad, but mm -hmm. where kind of our high schools and stuff, it's it's kind of ingrained that you want to go our parents, things of that nature, our peers, where there's so many people in this country who don't have that, good or bad. Mm -hmm. I'd love to learn more about that. No, it's true. And I, uh, it's it's interesting where, and again, to your point, I'll come back from your, all comes to your background, right? And what's important in your community and, and what matters there because yeah. that's what's reflected by way of what your future goals and decisions are. You know, should I go to college? Should I do X, Y, and Z and whatever, right? And college success are definitely not synonymous. Um, right, and and I think that's one of the fallacies that everybody says you need to go to college to get a job. You don't. The value of the internet now is you can do a lot of stuff on your own that you may want to do. You're creative. We're seeing a lot of this stuff. Yeah, which is dope, right? Like we went down one path because that was the only path available. Take that back. That was the path that we were put on, saying, "Hey, you have to go to college." That wasn't an option. It wasn't whatever. It was just a path you had to go down. And then to your point, there are a bunch of people. And the other part of it too is people don't realize. People don't realize what it costs, and other people don't realize that sometimes the money's actually readily available for them, that they may not yeah. realize. Like, I didn't know. When I went to University of Miami, our boy Loesch was the one who uh, encouraged slash forced me to apply, and I didn't apply because it was too expensive, and I was like, bro, I can't afford it, period. And he was like, just apply, and I was like, and the other part of that too, which is also annoying by the way, is I'm applying and I'm like, man, I gotta pay application fees, which is not hundred percent dollars, bro. That's not cheap either. I'm like, bro, I'm just throwing dollars away, right? And again, back then I think I was working at Olive Garden. It was like I was bathing in dollars, not that I'm bathing in dollars now, but you know my point. And I did, and I got a scholarship. But my point is, I I was had he not pushed me down that path, I would not have done it 
because the cost was too overwhelming. The cost, my perceived cost was too overwhelming. And I think that's another thing too, is everybody's like, well, I can't. You initially go, I can't afford that, depending on your background. Um, because unless your right. grades are ridiculous or whatever, um, and the schools are changing their their, administ- their their admission policies and whatever, because a lot yeah, of just plus, plus circumstances, true, and circumstances, whether you feel you need to help your family sure. financially or even yourself, sure. right? Like you mentioned, you had, you, had, you had multiple jobs in college and everything, we've talked about this here, but there could be an individual who thinks, even with that, I need to work full time, right, to help. I, I literally cannot do college, but mm-hmm. I'm wondering if that's changing now, though, with technology, online, things of that nature. But then, okay, so then, go, but that goes back to your original point. If I'm doing the online thing, I'm not, no, getting, I'm not getting the networking game. zero network. So the online game is... Yes. If, it's more going to the thing where we're forced and told we, we need to go to college. Yeah. Well, I mean, you need to have some situation where you're getting the social, the direct social interaction. Yeah. Online game think, ain't doing it. Well, I think, I think we could actually not need college. If we had a better, um, you know, high school education and, and better education system nationally in the country. But what well, you mean better? In no, but it prepare people just overall for life. No, but and, okay, and, but and entrepreneurship so, and even just working without needing a degree in, in certain fields where you don't need one um, and proceeding accordingly. So, so better meaning more job, like more vocational or better meaning no, just... No, it could help push people to vocational stuff naturally, mm-hmm. but just better educational system where people aren't falling through the cracks where kids are actually being taught and given... Not just uh, even just basic life skills, where there's confidence. But I think this, I think in high school, in America, it should be taught how to uh, taught about credit. Okay, I'll give you that. Uh, the the old adage of balancing a checkbook, mm-hmm. credit, the importance of credit, but, but basic yeah, customer sure checkbook is yeah, okay. yeah that's just the the basic customer service and just mm-hmm. logical things of how to. Help yourself in life, and which again helps society. You know, which will reduce crime. Actually, hey, look at that. I'll give you that. There are some simple things there uh, that are that are worth addressing at a younger age. I just find it interesting, and the reason the reason it was something that I pondered is because the industry I work in, a great many people have gotten have progressed up the ladder very very quickly, and have made oodles of dollars, and they're people of note, not based on any degree they may have. And generally speaking, they start off with somebody's assistant. And isn't a lot of it networking? It's all that. So you are somebody's mm-hmm. assistant. So by default, you are in on every call that that person is mm-hmm. having, right? So you can take notes and whatever, whatever. But you get to learn the negotiating. You get to learn, um, you know, what the you, everything, the deal terms, so on. So you get to learn, actually learn, versus somebody at a desk someplace who ain't learning nothing. And I don't know why I did that, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, it's 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 that kind of game where I'm like, wow, some of these people just aren't learning. Anymore. Well, I think you know Chris Saka, the uh, he's probably yeah. a Google. He's the um, the huge angel investor. He's been on Shark Tank okay. a lot. Uh, show sure I don't watch. So Continue. when he was in Google, he asked to be, and he would just show up to meetings. Yeah, literally just show up, and he'd say, oh, I'll just take notes, and that's how he got a wealth of knowledge. Is just the funny part about that is that's not. That's not offered slash allowed in a lot of companies, yeah. um, period. Because I know I've sat in a bunch of meetings and you're just not allowed to be in certain things. So certain things are above your pay grade or however you want to dub it. But not only that, but at that point, you're getting your education after the four years you spent doing, hopefully, networking. But that was where you're supposed to get your education. You learned nothing that's translating, that's translatable, yeah. right? And so that's why I'm always curious about the college thing and the, the pros, cons, and what. Real quick, doing. speaking of college, how weird is a mint? Bum, bum, bum. What did I do with college? Just thought of something. So we were, uh, I don't know if it was Thanksgiving or Christmas or what, we were going home to Jamaica one time. <laughs> you know where I'm going? Yeah, dude. <laughs> it's not even like a fun <laughs> story, man. It's a really it's, garbage story. It's Continue. a weird story. It's a How weird is it, man? No, it's a garbage story. And I didn't remember, I didn't remember what was going through my head at the time, but continue. Tell, okay. your, tell your version Speaking of the story. Speaking of head. Tell your version so, of the story. And his, his, his hair. So, okay, we're staying at my apartment. And you know, this is pre Uber, this is 1998, 99, mm-hmm. and Super Show. It's that big blue van in South Florida that pick up it's, people it's, up. It's nationwide. Was it? It is. Yes, it was. <laughs> oh, okay. 
right. I've taken it in New York, I know. Okay. I've sat on it for three hours before I got yeah. dropped off. So it picks yeah. up 50 freaking different <laughs> people who are on the way to the airport. So it was picking us up at like 7 in the morning to get to our flight. And I remember, I, I remember, I think Amit said something like, set the alarm. I was like, no, no, I'm going to be up all night. I'm just going to watch the game be up all night. And lo and behold, I fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> And my phone rang, and it was super shut out at the gate trying to get in. Mind you, we were sleeping. And there's people in the van, <laughs> but they're picking us up. <laughs> so, we're scrambling to get ready. Yeah. And unfortunately, no time to shower and anything, just brush teeth. This dude is working on his hair, as in like gel, and as you say, product in yeah. his hair. And I said, just throw on a friggin' hat. He said, no, I wore a hat yesterday, implying that he can't wear a hat two days in a row, the same hat. I don't remember that particular yes. response. So he's in the bathroom, gelling up his hair because he had already worn the hat yesterday, and how dare he do that? Again, told you, wasn't that great a story? Yeah. How weird is it? I'm going to go weird. There's so many words in you. How weird is it? I'm going to eat a beet burger. That's how weird is it? Oh, my dog ate all the beet burgers. <laughs> how sick is your dog? <laughs> yeah, he loved it. <laughs> he eats anything. Uh, <laughs> um, real quick, there's a house party in Jamaica. Oh, this is probably like, yeah, 96, 97. The Russell's house. Uh-huh. It was kind of like real casual. It might have even been like a pool party. You came strolling down the hill in your beige cocky pants and like a blue silky shirt tucking you with some buckle shoes. And I remember to this day thinking... What the hell is wrong? I probably didn't know. I didn't you know. said, oh, I didn't realize it was a new guy. Well, yeah, I didn't know, man. I was like, oh, did you think it was a wedding? <laughs> right, if I, I don't know, you got to do your stuff. Not only that, but I find it very funny. So now, I, now I'm on the opposite end where I refuse to, I, I don't wear pants unless I have to. Like, I'm on the opposite end where I don't want to get dressed up for anything. Yeah. And uh, back then, I wanted, back then I wanted to, there was a certain, uh, again, the way you're taught. Is it a quoi? There is a certain, there's a certain dress for success or dress what you, what is it? Uh, oh, dress for the job you want. Yeah, that BS. Yeah. Right, turns out dress for the job you want right now is looking like uh, some bum in Brooklyn and then all of a sudden you're going to be a producer. Like, that's the way that works. <laughs> it stopped right there. Right now is looking like uh, some bum in Brooklyn and then all of a sudden. I was looking like uh, Wait, some bum in Brooklyn and then all of a sudden. That's what I'm talking about. No, oh, there's something else. Uh, I'm about to get rid of this now. Wanted to. There was a certain technical uh, difficulties. Well, you're talking. You should have said what? Yeah, I'm just stopping there. You should have Oh, we. Uh, All right, boys. Ready? Three, two, do it. I don't want to go with this. We can pretty much wrap it up if you want. We're at 31. Yeah. Uh. Your parlor is getting back up on, on Apple? No. Yeah. All right. So anyway, the point was I didn't know what to wear, and uh, now I don't like dressing up. So new segment I think we'll have. How weird is it? No, if you can play this game, you are you're probably, you're probably, no, probably, you are weirder than I in almost every scenario. By way, and there's so many, weirder, so this, this weirder, guy, what, weirder than I am. With, with, yeah, no, I was right the first time. No, no, don't don't question me. <laughs> no, I was right the first time. Yeah, Dominic's also this dude who literally used to floss like three million times a day. Do you still do that? Do you still carry floss with you? I floss a lot. Yeah, but he used to floss like at in, like in the car, driving anywhere, whatever, like, driving with his knees, uber dangerous, just so he could floss his teeth, right? Well, obviously. Then this dude used to drive uh, like with flip flops. So he could crack his toes before he put him in shoes before he got out. You remember that situation? Right? So we're going anywhere. And I said, yo, we got to go. And he said, hold on. I'm going to crack the toes and put him in the shoes because I don't want to ruin the shoes. That makes no sense. But this was his whole thing. Right? Oh, so there's that. which is, And there's a whole plethora of other things that are equitably weird. Right? If we're going out this path. You want to open this can of words, my dude. You bought this on yourself. How weird. <laughs> it's, it's, right, no. Stay tuned. I'm, I'm going to go through the, uh, the, what? the weird, weird list. list. <laughs> yeah. Remember these things. Um, I'm gonna have to make the same situation here, yeah. and it'd be one. It'd be a mental journal or something. Could yeah, be a mental journal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Threw it out there. Yeah, just, just saying. All, All right, right real quick. On um, different note, in your notes, you wrote that um, 
Daniel Prud, he was a gentleman that died in police custody in the, I guess he died in the streets, right? In, uh, was it Buffalo or somewhere in New York? Yes, 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 it was in the street, yes. It's where they had placed a bag over his head? <clears throat> Correct. And the grand jury voted to clear the three cops 15 to five. Um, but then I read that it said it, it, the bag over his head did played a part in the death, but it was more, so excited delirium is what he was ruled the cause, excited delirium. Well, it, it's, it's, it's right in line with Chavez, where they're saying that, well, if there was a, Chavez, sorry, I said Chavez. Um, in, 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 in regards to his, you know, uh, Floyd had lack of oxygen due to carbon monoxide or, or due to a heart arrhythmia or whatever they're going with in that scenario for the defense. But it's like, you exacerbate the situation. That's what caused, you are the trigger point. I.e. the bag was the trigger point, right? It's like saying, hey, if I lock you in a box and you have claustrophobia, you know, uh, the box, the, the claustrophobia was what got you, not the box. Doesn't make any sense, the, the, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, it, 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 it's, you gotta have it go down the path here. So that is very, you know. So this gentleman was having, yeah, I don't know if it was a, a mental episode or drugs or both, but they wanted to place in this bag over his head. Um, I think they said it was he was he was he was in need of medication. I can't remember the scenario too. And the sad reality is there are too many of, of these types of stories that I'm blurred. getting them mixed up, no, and it's really it's a blurred. pretty shit thing to do. But that's kind of the situation here um, that I'm getting mixed up. Uh, but, oh, so real quick, and I know we keep saying real quick, <laughs> uh, another note. So Will Smith and Anton Fuqua pulled out their film out of Georgia and they moved it to Louisiana just because of the Georgia bill that we talked about at nauseum. And the, and they got praise from this. We're like, yay, way to go, because that's kind of what everybody wants right now. That's, like, that, that's, that's the easy play kick and media situation. On the flip side, Black Panther 2 will not be moving. That'll stay in Georgia. This is a Disney Plus project directed by directed by a black man about a black superhero in Georgia, and that's staying there. And the thought process there, or the statement that was given there was just that, in essence, what they're gonna do is you're gonna use the, the platform and the time to educate people on what's going on with the uh, un, 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 un law and the bad situation associated with it, and so on and so forth. So you're gonna use a platform to educate um, and if they were to leave, then it would cost jobs and so on and so forth, and that's why they're gonna stay put in Georgia. Now, go ahead. No, so I, I'm not here to tell you how to spend your money, but as I stated in a previous episode, when, what makes decisions happen is dollars and cents, Yeah. period. And if you stay, you're in essence, you can use your boys as long as you want. The boys have been out there. We've been talking about this forever. And nothing has changed. So you can claim you have this, this soapbox you're going to use to the benefit of the people. Not going to work. That's Sorry. what I was going to say. It, it's pro yes, it is true, sadly, that some people would lose their jobs. But that's not why they're doing this. It's also not to, how is this going to educate them? No. So, so to stop it's, the fakeness, yeah. that, like you would say. I mean, it's convenient. It's not going to be in the world because the dude is black. black so. Yeah. So no, this is, it's all about the dollars. Yeah, sense. this is Disney and everybody going, look, we're, and Brad Cooler is the director and he was the one who came out and said this, right? And he directed the first one too. And again, I can't tell him how to be distraught or irate or any of the above words, but if you're gonna claim that staying there yeah. is to the benefit of everybody, I think it's fair to say, that's like saying, hey, if we give tax benefits to the rich, it'll trickle down. True, that has never worked. Ever, 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 oh, ever. can't say that. Right, but it's never can't worked. can't say that with your accounting degree. <laughs> but, <laughs> We'll do trickle down. So now the same concept applies here. We'll educate the masses and it'll, it'll cause change. Except that it won't. Like that's not how you, this whole country, this, actually this country, this whole world is driven on dollars and cents. Yes. If you take away the dollars, people change. Plain and simple. Yeah. So well, that happened. And then to Will Smith and to Will Smith and Antoine Fuqua are getting chairs for their thing because that's, that's a Netflix project. So Netflix is looking good in the eyes of people. By the way, moving over to Louisiana, they're getting a pretty good tax benefit. Don't get me wrong. This didn't hurt them at all. Um, they did have to move, which cost some money, I'm sure, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not going to affect the project, right? And they're going to get a better tax a tax rebate, so it probably worked out for them financially as well. Uh, Disney's put a lot of money into Georgia. Almost all the Marvel films were filmed there. Um, so that's also one of the things is they have a stable. They have everything set up. They know they're doing things there, so there are economies of scale where you are getting value for being there because you've been there this long. So moving does cost them more. And again, I'm speaking from my knowledge of the situation, which obviously isn't 
everything that's available, but based on the man's own uh, public statement, education doesn't make any sense in this scenario to me. You do what you gotta do with that, but that doesn't make any kind of sense to me. Okay. Two, oh, you finished. I got two things. No, I was, well, I, I'm moving on to a different topic. Yeah, 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 not this. Go okay, on. so the other one is, um, this one is conveniently woke. Uh, hashtag conveniently woke. By the way, if this ever does trend, I'd like some credit for this. <laughs> Whenever someone listens to this in the future, just know that I came up with this first. Conveniently woke, Simon & Schuster, pulls out a distribution of a book about Breonna Taylor's murder by one of the officers involved. Now, if you jumped on the bandwagon- In the first place. Yeah. <laughs> All right, my dude. If you thought this was a good idea, Simon & Schuster, to distribute said book, I mean, simply put, I just want to say F you, but it's, it's that ridiculous. And then I go, you know what? Upon further evaluation, we're not going to do this because this is in poor taste. Conveniently woke ass. Like, this is obvious that you shouldn't do this in the first place, right? It's blatantly obvious. But this is, it's, so that, I saw that and I chuckled because mind you. But why do you think they did it in the first place? There is a market for it. Yes, money, like you're just saying, I'm just saying. Like, no, no, I know what they're pressing, yeah. but that's my point. You're pulling out now, why are you going out now? The, yeah. the same audience is still gonna be there for you. Yeah. They're not going anywhere, why are you gonna be woke now? Right, and only that, if you're gonna pull out and come out with this huge scene and personally you're saying, by the way, you're pulling out of this book. Again, conveniently woke, like you need me to know that you pulled out, of, you should never been in this deal in the first place. And if you are in this deal for money, which is your business and your prerogative, then don't pull out based on anything else. This is, in fact, your the base that you were hoping to sell to still exists. There are people who will read this book. And if you're pulling out now based on whatever backlash you're assuming you're going to get, and that's on you. That's poor, poor, poor decision-making on your part. No doubt. Go ahead. Um, two quick things if you say that. I know. Colorado District Judge Natalie Chase has resigned after she admitted to using racial slurs, the N-word, in front of her black employees, you know, inquiring why can white people not say this, but black people can, and, and, and is there a difference between E-R and A, and this, and it. This is an adult woman, this yes. This is an adult woman. Who's supposedly yes. a educated. judge. Yes. Yeah. And then going off on railing, of course, the old, it's all lives matter, you know. Oh, she sounds like a swell individual. Yes, yes. This is a judge. Yeah. You know, you know it's, it's, not fair. Why can't we say this word? Yeah. And then lastly, how weird is it? Did you gel your hair for this? No. Is your hair gel right now? No. It just naturally has that woof. Yeah. That, that lift up. Yeah. <laughs> I call it the. I just, I'm, I'll, I just, I, I'm my shit works. Yeah. It looks good. I it just it. lift up to the yeah, left. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually to the right. But all right, get there, get there. Um, and um, on, on the last positive, this is actually <laughs> a positive note. This is where we're going to end. Jimmy Kimmel and, and Mark, Mark Rober. So he is, Mark is a NASA engineer who's, who's become a quote unquote YouTube sensation talking about YouTube live streams about everything related to NASA and so on and so forth. Anyway, they're doing a live stream on 4.30 at 8 p.m. Eastern uh, for autism awareness. Oh. And they got a bunch of guests on there from John Seward, Conan O'Brien to Chris Rock, so on and so forth. Adam Sandler, who I don't think is talented, but either way, a bunch of people on there this is actually a good thing for those of you who want to support um, autism awareness, maybe donate to a cause, etc., etc. Uh, check it out. It will be at Eastern 4:30. Jimmy Kimmel. It'll be on YouTube because it'll be live stream. They haven't given a link for it or anything like that, but I guarantee that more information will come out and be on there. But that's 4:30. Uh, yeah. So hopefully this episode comes out before 4:30 uh, because we don't close stuff. Yeah, because we don't close stuff. So we'll yeah, see. We shall see. Uh, yeah. Please rate, review, subscribe, share the love, help us spread the word, our passion. We want to get it out there. Uh, thank you to all that have and do. And for the rest of you that are thinking about it, man, just make like a tennis shoe. Make like a tennis shoe? Just do it. Doo Doo Brown? I'm without speech, man. You don't know that song? I know the song. Yeah. He says make oh he does say make like a tennis shoe. Or maybe he says act. I don't remember. Yeah. I don't I, I don't remember. I, I remember. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, man. You don't have rights or anything. Right, so yeah. say yeah. say. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Justice over order. That, that's it. All right. I think he said thank you, everyone. It's perfect timing, actually. Hold up. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs>
I don't, I, I don't, I, I remember, um, <laughs> yeah. go ahead, man, because we don't have rights or anything, so go ahead and say it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, perfect time.